Good afternoon. It's Jeremy. It's Sunday, August the 28th. Several weeks ago, I was reading um, a very interesting article on one of the SDR news groups concerning a satellite called Q, um, Q0100, which I'd never heard of. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the uh, AMSAT type of satellites. Um, I have been recently working with the L-band with, um, for instance, receiving uh, GO-16 GPS and the uh, hydrogen line. So I thought this would be really interesting to look into. So I did a bit of research and I decided it'd be worth looking into the, Q's, uh, the Q0100. Um, <clears throat> this is um, this is where it's. A, it turns out that the Q0100 is a um, geosynchronous satellite. There it is. There it sits over the middle of Africa, over the People's Republic of Congo, and um, the um, AMSAT DL section has done a lot of work uh, on this um, on the satellite. It turns out that um, it sits on a commercial satellite. Uh, which has KU band and KA band um, transceivers for um, direct broadcast, and it's also got amateur equipment at 2.4 gigahertz, 13 centimeters, and 10.45 uh, gigahertz uh, downlink. So that's the amateur portion of this commercial satellite. Um, there's the footprint of the satellite, and you can see that for North America, there's Greenland. We're kind of out of luck and South America as well, except for northeastern Brazil. So if you were sitting right there in Natal, for instance, in Brazil, you'd be within the footprint. I did some quick calculations. There's my location there. This is the azimuth and elevation for the satellite. So unfortunately for me, uh, the azimuth is okay at 79 degrees, but the elevation is below my horizon up at 19 degrees. So I wouldn't be able to receive it. If you were in Natal, Brazil, right here, sitting on this tip here, then you'd be in luck. The azimuth would be 86, or about 87 degrees and 20 degrees, so you'd be able to see it. Here are some of the satellite parameters. It's located at 26 degrees east. That's the commercial section of KU and KA band. And this is the amateur portion. The uplink is on 2.4 gigahertz, and the downlink is on uh, 10 gigahertz. Now, I did... Um, a brief look at the uh, SDR equipment I have. The first SDR I had was the SDR IQ, and that that's basically an HF, very very uh, a good HF receiver. It works up to 30 megs. Then I've got uh, several RTLs. One, a couple of them have the R820 tuner, and that goes up to about 1700 megs. The one I use with GOES has an E4000 tuner, and it goes up to 2300 megahertz. But that's a little bit low from the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Now, I've got other two uh, two other SDRs. I've got a Hack RF1, which I've used uh, when I worked with ADSB. It goes from one to six thousand megahertz. It has just one port, so it's simplex. In other words, you can either transmit or receive. Now the Atom Pluto, which I got a couple of years ago, what's nice about it is you can extend the frequency range from 70 to 600 megahertz or 6,000 megahertz. And um, it has a separate RX and TX port, so it's um, it's full duplex there. So what I thought I'd do is I'd start investigating the uh, Pluto, Adam Pluto, for use with uh, receiving the QO100. Uh, as I say, we'll have to do um, a lot of research, but this is just uh, the first stab at it. I've got a short video at the end of this clip on um, how to test the antennas that come with the Pluto. When you get the Pluto, you get two little uh, stubby antennas on each port. Uh, so I wasn't too sure what frequency they worked on, so I, di I connected it to the na nano VNA, and it looks like it's around, uh, the resonant point's around 850 megahertz. So you have to be careful. If you're receiving, it's not so bad, but if you're transmitting, you don't want to be transmitting into a reflection. Uh, you want to be transmitting into, you know, as close to 50 ohms as possible. Otherwise, you might wreck the... Uh, the transmitter. So it's good to know if you're going to use this antenna that really you should it, you should confine your your work to around 850 megs. There's a plot of the VSWR and there's the uh, there's 8, 850 megs at 1.2 VSWR. Now the nice thing about the um, the Pluto SDR 
is that you can access it very easily. Basically, what it is, it's a transceiver chip, the AD9364, uh, sitting on top of a sort of a, almost like a Raspberry Pi Linux box. So you can either get into it using Ethernet or you can get into it using PuTTY. So uh, if you use PuTTY, what you do is you locate the COM, uh, COM port that it's using in Windows Device Manager and set it to serial and you can get in. And uh, that's the type of screen you get in. You log in as root and the password is analog. But what I've done here is um, I've just uh, I put in two commands to see whether the AD9364, the extended frequency, was enabled, and it was. Uh, there's a good, uh, I went to a seminar given in by Analog Devices a couple of years ago, uh, given by um, Robin Getz and um, uh, Dr. Collins. And that seminar, a similar one, is on the uh, is on YouTube. So it's it's a very good introduction to using the uh, the Pluto SDR. Now, here is a quick setup for getting into the Pluto. What I did is, as a start, I was quite interested in um, what kind of power can I get out of the Pluto. So one thing I did is I connected the transmitter through a 30 dB pad into the receiver and and I cooked up um, a way of accessing it using SDR Angel. And another thing I did is I took the output of the transmitter and I fed it directly into a signal hound spectrum analyzer just to see uh, what kind of power I could get out. So at 70 megs, uh, the output power is minus 6 dBm. It starts to go up at 144 megs, I got minus 1. And at 43, 33 megahertz, I got plus 3. Um, so let's uh, let's actually look. I'm connected right now into the loopback mode with STR Angel. Let's go into STR Angel. So for convenience, I've got what's called a works two workspaces. So my W0 workspace is for the transmitter. So there's my transmitter device, the Pluto. And to get it to uh, put output power, you can you have to have to have a channel attachment. So I just uh, use the AM modulator as a simple channel attachment. It's working right now, and you can see that it's putting out a carrier at uh, 2.4 gigahertz. If I increase the modulation percentage here, you'll see these sidebands at plus or minus 1 kilohertz. I've enabled this tone here, which is 1 kilohertz, so those are the sidebands. If I go into the receiver portion, um, so there's my receiver device. It's set at 2.4 gigahertz, and... Uh, I've got an AMD mod there as well, and you can listen to the tone. But to actually, uh, if I just want to check the power output, uh, I can just crank this down to 0% modulation and I get the pure carrier. So that's how I did the, uh, the power test. So uh, in future videos, I'm going to dig into this a little bit more. Like I say, the Pluto looks like the best bet for this type of uh, satellite reception and transmission because it's duplex. And... Um, I am uh, going on vacation another week, and I'm heading down to close to the equator. So I may be in that footprint, and I may be able to uh, receive the satellite. So we'll see. So I'm just looking at the Adam Pluto. When it comes uh, in the box, it, it contains two stub antennas, one for the receive and one for the transmit. So I've taken off the transmit one, and I've attached it to my Nano v uh, VNA. And I've set up and calibrated the Nano VNA from 500 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz. And there's the uh, SWR, and you can see that it has a nice dip there at around 850 megahertz. When I put it on the computer screen here, um, there's the dip there at around 850. From SWR2 at the low point, it's about 840, and then the high point is about 870 megahertz. So, that's kind of the range there, plus or minus 10 megahertz from, let's say, 850 megahertz. That's where you'd have an S2, SWR less than two. Uh, as you can see, it, it goes rapidly either side. So if you're gonna use it as a transmit antenna, you're kind of stuck in this narrow range here. You don't want to use it up here because you'll probably uh, cook the final amplifier because the SWR will be too high.